In the previous episode, I told you how you can use the already built Docker images to launch a Node.js server with Mongo database. Now we will build our own Docker image. If you haven't watched that video and you want to know the basics of working with Docker, check it out first. I will post the link to it in the comments below. Let me remind you of what we already done. We were working on an example API application written in Node.js by using Express Framework. We used Docker and Docker Compose to run two services. The first one was a Mongo database based on the 3.6 version of an official Mongo image. The second was an actual application based on a Node image in version 10. Before we dive into the details of creating a Docker image, let's talk about Node modules folder. When you work with Docker, it is very important that you install all the dependencies by the Node version from the Docker. Why is it so important? Namely, some NPM packages depend on native code which has to be built for each platform, each operating system. So when I install them locally, outside the container, I will install the version for my MacBook Pro, and it won't work in the Node container which is based on Linux. One way of fixing that would be to run npm install whenever we launch the container. It will work, but it will slow down the application start time. Another way would be to update the Docker image so that it has all those node modules already installed. And this is what we will do in this episode. So let's start with the basics. We will define our image. Let's create one. Then we need a base image which will be our starting point. We will use the same node image in version 10. Dockerfile contains instructions on how to create our image. So let's start with the simplest example in which we will define what we already have in the docker compose yam file. Let's define all environmental variables we will use and give them default values. There will be mongo url and a port. I will comment out the corresponding lines in docker compose yam file. Then let's define the work dir and the user who will run all the commands. Also, we need to create the folder before we use it, with the run command. If we don't, Docker will create it by the root user and we won't have rights to fill it in. Now specify that the server exposes a 4040 port. But we still need to map this port to our localhost in the docker compose yam file. Also, we need to add the wait for it script. We can either use what we already created or download it right from the GitHub. We'll use the second option so we can remove it from the repository later on. We will add this on the top because it has to be executed by the root user. Now let's add the exec write to all users as we did in the previous episode. We will use run instruction. Now let's define a command. I will create another environmental variable, wait for, where I put Mongo along with the 27017 port. Copy the command from the Docker Compose. And change the path to the script. And use the end variable we previously defined. There are two more things we have to add to the Docker file. First, we have to copy all the files from our local directory to the worker defined in the Docker. Next, we have to run npm install. But we don't want to copy all the files. Especially, we don't want to copy data folder created by Mongo container and node modules because, as I mentioned before, they should be installed in the Docker environment. We can exclude those folders by using the docker ignore file. It behaves in the same way as the git ignore file. Whatever we put there won't be copied. So let's add data and node modules there, and also a couple of other files. Obviously, we don't need to copy git or npm debug. So let's take a look at our docker compose yaml file again. We can comment out the volumes for now. We will build our own image, so let's spec this out by adding the build parameter and specify the place where the Docker file is. Next, 
change the image to the name we will be using. Let's use JSCast and tag it episode 8. Comment out the parameters we already defined in Dockerfile. OK, now let's run all the services by using docker compose app command. Since this is the first time we launch it, docker will go through each line in the docker file and build the image in steps. Let's wait a little bit. And now we see that the application is working. Let's check out the page. And we see iconic hello world message. Everything seems to be working. Now, when we list all the images, we see our new image. Let's enter the app service and see how it looks from the inside. Make sure you have Docker Compose app running. In the separate terminal session, let's run Docker Compose, but instead of the app instruction, we'll use exec, which will execute a given command in the service we specify. Let's use app, because this is the name of the Node.js server. And lastly, we have to specify the command. We'll use bash. OK, now we are in. Let's list all the files. We see that there is no data folder because we excluded that from syncing. We also see that there is a node modules. It was installed by the npm install command we specify in the docker file. And our local node modules is empty. But wait. Does it mean that we have different files in the container than in our local environment? Yes. This is because we copied them all at the time of image creation. Let's check out if this is the case. Remove the obsolete wait for it file. Now let's see the Docker container again. The files still exist there. So we created an image which contains all the application code in the state from a minute ago. It is perfect for the deployment. Now we can upload this image to the server and launch it there. Server only needs to have one dependency, docker process installed and running. But this image is pretty useless when it comes to our local development. Let's change that. Go back to docker compose yam file. We can overwrite all the defaults from the docker file here. So let's bring back our volumes. Just as a reminder from the previous episode, volumes, to put it simple, specify sharing directories, most often between the container and the local machine. But if we do this like that, we will overwrite node modules installed within the image. To skip node modules, we can create another volume, but we won't map it to our local folder. Make sure it is above the previous one. OK, now let's rerun our Docker Compose. Now enter the container again. We see that there is no wait for it script we removed locally. But node modules are still taken from the image, not from our local environment. Now we can make a change locally and it will be reflected in the docker container. There are two improvements I would like to introduce. One will be to use name volume for data storage in Mongo service. We can define a volume here. Let's name it dbdata and use this name volume instead of a local folder. That is why we now can remove data from the repo and the docker will handle the rest. Next thing I want to improve is caching mechanism in docker file. If we run the docker compose with the build flag again, it will rebuild the image. We see that docker remembers which operations it already performed and takes them from the cache. But when it comes to copying files and all the next steps, it performs them again. Everything because at least one file in our local folder has been updated. If you often rebuild images, you should optimize this process. You can move npm install above the actual copy command. To install packages, we need only package.json and package.log.json files. So let's copy them first. 
That is why npm install will be rerun only if one of those files change. Otherwise, it will be taken from the cache. Let's rebuild the app for the last time to see if everything is working. Ok, that will be it for now. In this episode, we fully dockerized a Node.js app. Now you have solid grounds for working with Docker. You can always go to Docker documentation and find out how everything works in details to better optimize your Docker images. Hope you liked this episode. If you did, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned.